What's up guys, Jake here. Now, this video might get a little weird, but welcome to my world. In general, I consider myself a very intelligent person, but I fell hard the last two weeks. I'm pretty confident I was being catfished, and in this video, let's break it down, and I wanna share some life lessons with you. First of all, what is a catfish? A catfish is someone who pretends to be someone they're not using Facebook or other social media, in my case, Instagram, to create false identities, particularly to pursue deceptive online romances, maybe to scam you as well. I did consider the possibility that I was being honeypotted, which is um, a problem that people in the military have when attractive women, uh, you know, approach you in a bar and then start asking you questions about your job. So you have to be careful about what information you divulge. And I've got a YouTube channel with over 62,000 subscribers, so I'm putting this video out there to basically solve a crime. I want your help, potentially, to find this person because she is the victim. She is a victim of identity theft. Somebody has been taking her pictures consistently and impersonating her with a spoof account to message guys to scam them more or less. So if you know this person, and can get me in touch with them, I just want to make sure that they've been warned that potentially one of their followers on Instagram is stealing all of their pictures and posts and, and content to impersonate them with scams. So if I can find this person, uh, potentially I will take down this video in the future to uh, protect her identity and her privacy. And let's just get the most obvious detective work out of the way. I've already taken some of her images from Instagram and used them to reverse Google image search. I can't find her. I've, I've searched everywhere, but I just don't know her and I don't have any connections. So this is the Instagram account that I want everyone to watch out for. And it's Christy underscore Becca. And her name is Dr. Christy R. Johnson. 30, flirty, and thriving, single, with a lipstick emoji. That's probably red flag number one. If there's any ladies watching this, um, you know, there's so many scammers out there that will just use the lipstick, lipstick emoji that I just associate it with a scam now. PhD in history, that's pretty interesting. Outdoorsman, beach enthusiast, gun aficionado, world traveler, teacher. 749 posts, so that looks pretty good that it's not a scam account. Uh, I, I did check the posts, we'll go over it a little bit later, but it goes back eight years. She has 1,100 followers and is following 754. So from the onset, this looked like a legit account. She initiated the conversation on Instagram by responding to one of my daily stories, and I was saying, whoa, an attractive woman with a PhD, uh, sure, I'll try a conversation with her when she's initiating the message. So I said, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? That's kind of my general opener. And she gave me a pretty decent response. Now, red flag number one, uh, even though I have 62,000 followers on YouTube, I'm gonna be honest, I've only ever had men message me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, every woman who has ever messaged me was trying to market something or sell me something or uh, get something from me immediately. Uh, not uh, try and catfish me or, or scam me somehow. So the odds that an intelligent, attractive woman would just start hitting on me, I, I should have just known better. I mean, I want to believe that we live in a world where that's possible, but is it probable? And yes, she immediately started complimenting me, saying, you look good. I said, thanks. Uh, and she said, hey, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me. And I said, sure. Uh, I also, you know, went straight for the obvious conversation piece of she has a PhD in history. That's cool. What's that about? She says, sorry for sliding into your DMs. I get this question all the time. I personally am a huge history nerd, so I wanted to see what she would say. And she had a really good answer. Uh, she has two for American history. She loves uh, the history of the CIA and the Dulles Brothers and the lead up to World War I. For world history, she likes the Azerbaijan history with Armenia, uh, going back history and politics, and uh, the history between Turkey and Russia and the Black Sea. These are not, uh, you know, low-hanging fruit answers, guys. Like, 
This is pretty advanced stuff. Uh, I read Lost Enlightenment by Frederick Starr last year, so I'm actually very familiar with Central uh, Central Asian history. So, you know, I, 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 I had a conversation with her about it, and she was capable of carrying it. She knew what she was talking about. So yeah, the conversation just flowed very naturally, and this person was highly intelligent, and, you know, based on the conversation, I'm gonna go ahead and say American. And she said that she was on the fence about joining the Air Force herself. I'm, I'm currently active duty. She said she took the Air Force officer qualifying test and was offered uh, a position in the Air National Guard in Connecticut. So I said, cool, that's, that's really awesome. I've, I've put out videos on my channel about how to apply uh, to officer training school. She said that, uh, you know, to commit to going in, she'd have to go to OTS and then tech school for like nine months, which would take her away from her teaching job. She said that she teaches at a private school uh, in, in Connecticut, uh, teaches sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. She said that her dad was military and she grew up around the lifestyle. I could tell from the conversations that she was very familiar with uh, military life and military people. She told me she lives in Connecticut. Uh, I said that I might be moving to Las Vegas when I get out of the Air Force. And this was weird because my sister lives in Connecticut. She lives in Norwalk. Uh, so she, I was actually just there last month. And she said, bummer, you know, we could have met up. I live in New Canaan. She initially misspelled it, but then got it correct here. And New Canaan is 15 minutes away from Norwalk. So she was telling me that she lives only 15 minutes away from my sister. I don't know if that's a red flag or not. It could have just been an amazing coincidence. She also told me that I'm the first guy she's actually ever DM'd, and I, I don't know about that. Why would you tell me that? And why, if you're 30, have you never initiated a conversation with a guy before? But I was talking about, hey, when I'm living in Vegas, potentially, you can come visit me. You know, I'm just fantasy building here because it's fun to flirt. Uh, and we talked about potentially going to see the Hoover Dam. I've been there before and she's never gone. Uh, I asked, what's it, what's there cool to do in New Canaan, your area? And she joked, uh, go to NYC, go into Manhattan basically, which is a very Connecticut answer to give. Uh, my sister took me to a Stu Leonard's. Uh, she said that she has a boat uh, and we could go wakeboarding. So we talked about that. We talked about snowboarding, other uh, athletic activities we like engaging in. She runs marathons. I talked about all my future plans and my ambition with YouTube and potentially writing in the future. She said, I must admit your drive for success is very attractive. You are physically attractive as well. Okay. Uh, she said that she considers herself picky, but apparently I meet her standards. She says, I look fine. And if I'm worried about because I, she was asking for a picture, like full body, uh, just to see what I look like. Because in my videos, it's always just this box. And I said, uh, you know, let me uh, let me go to the gym and I'll get back to you. <laughs> she then told me that she was previously engaged to an army ranger and uh, that he was a good guy, but it just didn't work out. Uh, basically, she said he chose the military lifestyle over her, and she didn't want to have to constantly move around like. She did when she was a child. Since uh, COVID hit, she said that she hadn't been seeing anyone or going on any dates, uh, maybe, whatever. <laughs> she then told me that she's only been drinking alcohol the last two years uh, because when she was a freshman in college, her mom and grandmother were killed by a drunk driver. So she just decided to always be the designated driver uh, in her sorority. So she went to parties, liked to have fun, but just didn't drink until two years ago. So all the details that I've been given so far are very specific and very real feeling. And my guess is, is that this scammer who's following this real person on Instagram is just using the real details of her life to, uh, you know, b build a backstory that makes them seem more authentic and, and more believable. She, uh, the scammer also said that uh, she went to University of Miami for undergraduate through a doctorate also got a master's in English from UCF. It's at this point after talking to her for almost two hours or something that she said, would, I, would you rather uh, talk on iMessage? And being the dummy that I'm in, I'm like, what do you mean? You mean like just text messaging? And she then uh, told me, yeah, uh, give me your number and I can text you. 
So I even said as a joke, if you are catfishing me, then this is the greatest con of all time. She makes a joke of it and says, hey, I'd actually use a pretty person's pictures to do that. Actually, I'm here to ask you about your car's extended warranty. So I then uh, texted her, because uh, she gave me her number, and I saved her number in my phone as uh, extended car warranty. And the area code for the number is in Connecticut, so uh, that checks out. But as soon as I messaged her, she said, you know, laugh my ass off, I'm honored, you need to turn on iMessage on, so my texts show up blue, settings, messages, iMessage. She wanted me to turn something on in my settings, which probably should have been a red flag. And then she messaged me, wait, now it's working, I guess it was on my end, blonde moment. And she didn't respond to me from that number. So initially, uh, yeah, she texted me four times from that number, but then it switched to an AOL address. It says Christy Becca loves at AOL.com. Now this, this number, uh, after I, every, everything, everything fell apart, <laughs> I called it and I found out that this number belongs to text now which is uh, a phone service app where you can basically spoof a number anywhere you want. This is a legitimate service in, in, in that if you want to sign up for something and you don't want this company knowing your real phone number, you can create a temporary phone number on your phone with a specific area code. Uh, you know, while you're connected to the internet, you can use it temporarily. You're paying monthly for the service or something but that phone number doesn't belong to you. And the next time you go into the app, you're gonna have a different phone number, it, it, it cycles. So calling this number doesn't do, any, doesn't do anything, texting this number also doesn't do anything now. So the first life lesson we can draw at this point is don't give out your telephone number to people you are not 100% confident they're real. Because of two-factor authenticating with all of your accounts these days, your telephone number is almost becoming as private and important as your social security number. I'm, I'm being serious. Uh, so now that I realize that potentially I was being scammed, um, yeah, I went to the mall today to go to the Verizon store and I had to change my phone number. So not fun, uh, but if the scammer's watching this and you have my cell phone number, it doesn't matter. I've already logged into all my accounts to change my two-factor authentications. Uh, the cell phone won't work for you. So let's go back to that AOL address and how sketch it is. It has the word loves at the end of her name. I mean, I guess uh, if you made this account when you were in college, you think, you'd think that that would be interesting. First of all, why, why would you have an AOL address? Uh, you know, if she was 18 in 2010, who's signing up for AOL in 2010? <sighs> talking on iMessage is better than talking on WhatsApp or Telegram. Those two apps are basically complete scams, but we just got right back into it. And after saying blonde moments, I said, hey, I used to be blonde, you wanna see? She said, sure, so I shared some baby pictures and childhood pictures of me uh, with blonde hair until it got darker when I was a teenager. She then shared child picture, uh, childhood pictures of herself with me, so, uh, you know, as a scammer, uh, she, she's got all the details. He, probably, it's probably a guy, has all the details and was even sharing kid pictures. How could this scammer get kid pictures? One, Instagram, but two, people just send them. I sent the scammer childhood pictures of myself. So now, if this person ever wants to impersonate me, they have childhood pictures. She then asked to see a picture of me once again to compliment me, I guess. I sent her this and she said, well, I meant a full body. I already find your face attractive. I joked, uh, let me do 30 sit-ups and I'll get back to you tomorrow. From here on out, I'll just share the texts with you guys, but we had nightly conversations for almost two weeks, going back and forth, talking about everything. Uh, we talked about our Myers-Briggs personality types. I am, I'm an INTJ, for those of you who know what that means. Uh, we talked about, you know, our life, and uh, she says that she's a total introvert, but sometimes forces herself to get out of the habit of just staying home and reading a book. Uh, I could tell that she was well-read. I asked what book you, you finished recently, and she said, How to Hide an Empire by Daniel Imerwa. I haven't read this book, but, I mean, I, I didn't doubt for a second that she, the scammer, had. 
So she kept asking for more pictures of me. She says, ha ha, do you think I'm looking for a Ken doll? I bet you're perfect the way you are. You still didn't send me the full body picture so I can tell you that you look great. Okay, so I decided to send her a full body picture and I sent her this. For Halloween a couple years ago, I dressed up as Mr. December in a sexy firefighter's calendar. Uh, so there you go, you get a full picture. She responded, laughed my ass off. Oh my God, you are so freaking adorable. And uh, I said, yeah, I try really hard. And over the next couple days, the conversation just evolved like normal, just meandering from topic to topic as two people naturally get to know each other. Uh, I said I had a PS4, but I don't really play video games. Uh, sometimes I play Fortnite because it's free. She said uh, that she has an Xbox and she plays Flight Simulator and uh, Forza, which is a racing game. We once again went back to that army ranger that she was engaged to and I just asking, you know, what, what specifically happened? And she said that he wanted her to stay at home as a wife uh, and that's something that she didn't want to do. Uh, he was going to be gone a lot for work and that's also not something that she wanted. Uh, and this was a very interesting detail here. She said it was hard because my dad liked him a lot. My dad is a former SEAL, so they respected each other. So even though we ended on good terms, I felt like I disappointed my dad. And that really struck me because I also don't have a, a close relationship with my mother. My mother's still alive, but um, my father is the most important person in my life and his approval is, is, is very significant to me. So she just kept saying all these things where I just felt this, this strong connection to her. But of course, about once a day while talking over these two weeks, she would go back to asking for pictures of me, saying, you look great, stop it, uh, I need proof. And I even joked as a response, someday maybe if you actually are real and aren't catfishing me. Uh, so if you guys aren't familiar with the sextortion scandal that happened with military members, this was a big news story in 2018, but basically prisoners in jail uh, were, were getting online, mostly like Tinder and other dating apps, matching military members and then sending them nudes and getting nudes from them. And uh, the scam was, is that, you know, their father would then text them the next day saying, hey, I found your nudes on my daughter's cell phone. She's only 17, she's underage. Not only uh, do you now have child pornography on your phone, but you sent, uh, you exposed yourself to a minor. Send me uh, $2,000 in Bitcoin to this address, otherwise I will go to the police with this information. And active duty service members were just sending the money. They, they didn't know what the heck was going on. So this is a huge concern and I'm, I'm no dummy, I'm, I'm aware of it. So uh, potentially that's what this whole catfishing incident was about was just to get me to send her nudes and then at some point uh, blackmail me for them for money. You know, send me crypto to this address. Otherwise, you know, you're an active duty officer in the Air Force, you're a YouTuber. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you don't send me this money, then I will post these on the internet. I said if she wants full body pictures of me, then she can just look at me on Facebook. Uh, I'm, I'm always happy to friend people so they know I'm a real person. She said, I deactivated Facebook. It was a time suck and toxic. And that's unfortunate because Facebook is a time suck and toxic, but it's really good at um, proving that a person is real. To hopefully satisfy her, I did send her pictures of me that included my body, uh, you know, just pictures in front of the mirror that are perfectly presentable. Uh, she then actually shared with me her YouTube channel. Uh, and this channel is very interesting because it does include videos of this girl from when she was in college 10 years ago. So what I think is happening here is this YouTube channel is legit, but maybe the, the username and password is long gone. And the scammer is, is saying, hey, if you want to see videos of me to prove I'm real, check out this YouTube channel. But I went into my YouTube analytics to see if this uh, channel has ever commented on any of my videos and they never have. So either this person had never commented on any of my videos or they weren't using this YouTube account to watch me and subscribe. This channel doesn't isn't subscribed to my channel either. 
So after talking every night for a couple days, I, you know, I'm trying to get that video date. Feel free to say another time, but did you have an interest in video chatting for a little bit tomorrow night? She said, we can stick a pin in that. Uh, I'll be out tomorrow night. Sounds good. Uh, we'll try another time. Other conversation topics that I want to share with you guys that just made this relationship feel real was I, I, I talked about my future plans of traveling to South Korea next spring. I'm thinking about getting an Airbnb for a month. She says, you are killing me, LOL. I'd be so down if I'm invited, of course. She, uh, she said that she could get a sabbatical approved from her school if it was for learning purposes and going traveling to South Korea for a month would, would count. We talked about uh, just really nerdy stuff. You know, I read this book, Why Nations Fail. I highly recommended it to her. She sent me a YouTube video about the Marshall Islands. Uh, you know, I, I talked about Extra History, which was a, a really good YouTube channel and because she majored in history and we, we talked about this. We talked about our favorite YouTubers and I follow and love CGP Grey, Veritasium, Vlog Brothers, SciShow, Crash Course. Big thing, Polymatter, Kurt's a God. She also follows these channels and, and, and could talk about them, understood what they were. We talked about North Korea and she said, I read about the two American soldiers that defected to North Korea and became movie stars. This is true, they were used in propaganda films. Uh, Kim Jong-un is a 21st century Caligula, basically. She brought up the assassination of the president of Haiti. Like these are not typical like, show me your nudes, scam uh, conversations. This person, whoever it is, is educated. And these conversations were flowing so naturally that I just didn't have any suspicions. I didn't want to believe that this person was fake. You know, this, this scammer, it's probably a guy, seems like a really cool guy and we could be friends if they weren't an unethical scam artist. Uh, I, I even said at one point, uh, which is silly because you could still be catfishing me here. And her response is, LOL, an Instagram account for 12 years set up just waiting for you, which is true. Her Instagram account goes back to 2011. I then said, send me a pic of yourself holding up three fingers with your left hand. Just a, a picture of yourself, three fingers left hand to prove you're real. We don't have to video chat tonight. She replies, I'm a hot mess. Uh, she said that she had run seven or 11 miles or something, and that we could wait until our FaceTime date. I then responded, well, that's something a catfish would say. We talked about recent TV shows that we've both been watching, uh, F Boy Island on HBO Max. Uh, she recommended Too Hot to Handle. We talked about uh, The Good Place on NBC. We talked about Black Mirror. She shared a video from Real Life Lore, a great YouTube channel about Mexico City's geography being terrible. Uh, I shared with her a video from Adam something about how terrible Dubai is. Uh, I asked if she's ever been to Dubai and she said, uh, no, her dad told her not to go by herself. What a weird detail for a scammer to give. Uh, it's just so convincing. At this point, I was back from the field and there were no excuses for us not to have a video date. On Thursday, I said, hey, when are we doing this video chat? And she said, Sunday night. Uh, she was busy Friday and Saturday. So I said, okay, we can do Sunday night. Uh, and, I, and I jokingly said, I told my sister about you and that I might be visiting Connecticut next month to see you. She asked if we had video chatted yet and I said no. She then said I was definitely being catfished. LMFAO. Well, LMAO. <laughs> I told my best friend in the Air Force about you and that I might go visit you next month. She told me that I am definitely being honey potted and you are a Russian asset. Oh geez. They both are half joking. Only half. On Friday, she said, good morning, handsome. Hope you have a great day. Also another scantily clad pic. Uh, she wanted, once again, more pictures of me. I instead sent her this uh, joke. Uh, Out of all the inventions in the last 100 years, the dry erase board is the, probably the most remarkable. <laughs> uh, just, just being funny. She then on Saturday said that she was upset and she told me this story that her cousin left her dog at her place in the kennel and the dog got out and ripped up the sectional sofa, her mattress and some Louis Vuitton heels and some clothes. Oh no, that sounds terrible. Uh, I asked, does the dog have issues? And she said it was just a, a young energized German shepherd dog.
But once again, I'm pressing for this video date to happen. So I said on Sunday, uh, it's happening tonight, right? 8 p.m. your time, 7 p.m. my time. She responds, I'll let you know. She then claimed there was a power outage. She didn't have internet or power. And she said she was having a bad day. I said, okay. Uh, I kind of I paused there for like five or 10 minutes, I don't know, before I said I understood with a smiley face. She then said, that's a long response time for two words. Uh, and then I said, oh, but I'm, I'm working out. That's why I didn't respond right away. She then uh, asked for progress pics uh, of me, you know, from working out. And I said, not until we have a real video conversation. That was at 5 p.m. and she never responded to me. At uh, 7.30 or 8, I sent her this pic. And by basically 11 o'clock at night, I sent her this pic. And uh, yeah, I think at that point, uh, the scammer realized they weren't going to get any nudes of me. And uh, yeah, and by midnight, I realized that this was a completely fake person. So let's check out her Instagram page together. If you look her up, it's currently privated. You have to be approved before you can see all of her pictures and history. And uh, this is the YouTube page real quick. And she does have a, a Twitter page. Once again, this is not the real girl. This is the scammer who set up a Twitter account, but it looks like this Twitter account isn't really used. The scammer is primarily using this Instagram page. Once again, 1,100 followers, remember that, and 754 people that the scammer is following. So if we go to the bottom of the page, let's, let's go to the, the bottom here. This is the oldest post. If we click on it, uh, the date that it was posted was December 22nd, 2012. And I'll be honest, guys, I don't, I don't know how you do this. How do you create an Instagram account uh, that's backlogged to show old timestamps? Uh, she, the, 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 the text box for this picture is LOL morning guys, hashtag morning, hashtag hello, hashtag bed hair, hashtag blong, 452 weeks ago. And I, I should have picked up on this sooner, but on all of her pictures, the comments are very short, uh, from just not real people, I guess, uh, the privated, you know, there's so many fake spam Instagram accounts out there that if you want to buy followers or buy comments, uh, it costs like 13 bucks. I'm not going to link any websites or show any websites where you can do this, uh, but it's very easy to manufacture followers and manufacture comments. But how do you get a post to show that it's eight years old? If, if, if there's some way to change uh, the timestamps uh, of when something's posted to Instagram, I'd like to know. Uh, otherwise, this scammer has been impersonating this person for nine years, potentially. So all of these old pictures, it's the same thing. Just dudes uh, commenting something like, babe, uh, there's no women commenting on any of these posts. Uh, the descriptions are always pretty generic. Nobody's ever tagged. Let's now go to the most recent post. Uh, so the most recent post is here and it's her right here on a boat with like 10 women. And the description is hopefully everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. I definitely had a great time with great people. Hashtag all American hashtag 4th of July. And the only comments, uh, and there's not many of them, are, are from dudes. Uh, there's this dude uh, who seems probably like a nice guy, uh, sharing, sharing bathroom selfies in his underwear on Instagram. Uh, there's this guy, uh, you know, posing, posing on a merry-go-round. Uh, this guy seems pretty normal. <laughs> and of course, uh, Christy follows all these people as well. A uh, guy named Branton Huber, uh, Weird and Wild 99, uh, Low Speed High Drag, uh, yeah. And then guy named Real Jesse Lee. And of course, Christy follows all these people, but there's no interaction happening here. There's no ha-has, there's, no, uh, there's no banter, there's, no, there's no, res no replies, just fire emojis and, 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 and heart with eyes and looks good, babe. Like... If you had 1,100 followers, including family and friends from your time in college when you were in a sorority, why would there not be more interaction from these women uh, on her post? 
We can go ahead and look at the next one. Once again, uh, Snowmass Mountain. I guess this is where I peak. Once again, all the comments are, are just from just from dudes. No interaction. Next picture, her in a bathing suit. Summer things, uh, sun, sun, sun. Uh, once again, just dudes, uh, interesting dudes uh, posing fire emojis and heart emojis and uh, we love it. Yeah, probably not real if the women in the photos are not interacting with her at all. So what's happening here is the real woman uh, in these pictures is posting to her Instagram and the scammer is following her, just stealing them and then duplicating it on this Instagram account. And this is so terrible, but like, here's a picture of her with her grandparents uh, about COVID. And once again, just uh, guys, you know, Northeast gunfighter, squirtle trainer, uh, the, the only comments on these photos. What, what really sealed the deal and, and made me think that I'm not crazy, that this is a complete nine-year-old uh, scam Instagram account, is when we go down to these engagement photos. And why would a scammer post uh, engagement photos? But here is uh, this army ranger, Alex, uh, allegedly proposing to her on a beach. Uh, and the text box is pretty convincing, so it looks like the scammer cop copies the text boxes. But then, once again, these comments, congrats to you and your husband, congrats, congrats, I love this, uh, happy for you, Cogs, beautiful couple, whoa, engaged. So, you know, how many comments is there? Something like, uh, something like 12, 10? She has 1,100 Instagram followers, and probably including family and friends. This is her engagement to a very handsome, successful guy, and you're only gonna get 11, 12 comments, all from kind of single dudes creeping on your profile. When we go here, once again, engagement photos, and these are like professionally done. These are really nice looking. These were posted February 1st, 2019. These don't have any comments. Uh, like these are really nice engagement photos of this couple. Like they could actually still be together and be engaged or married by now. Uh, and 1,100 followers on Instagram, not a single comment. That just doesn't, doesn't jive with a woman, uh, you know, who is in a sorority and has all these female friends and has been in the wedding party of, of I'm, I'm assuming, probably her sorority sisters. Why would none of these women ever be commenting on any of her Instagram posts? And once again, this person's not interacting with anybody commenting. How do you do this? I don't know. So to wrap it all up, I definitely was being scammed somehow, and somebody probably is gonna try and impersonate me to scam other people. They were just trying to harvest more photos before they could do it. So if you guys could do me a favor, go on Instagram, find this account, and uh, uh, report it. Report this user as a scam. Uh, and if anyone knows this woman in real life, uh, just warn her that somebody uh, following her on Instagram is, is stealing her pictures and impersonating her and potentially has been impersonating her for like nine years. Okay guys, that was a lot. Uh, once again, just wanna warn people on both ends uh, the potential dangers of exposing your social media on the internet and what people can do with it. It really sucks that these people are out there and they're so scummy and they have nothing better to do with their lives. It's just kind of incredibly sad. Till the next video, take care.